Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Toyota Priuses and the hybrid cooling system, and codes uh, that, that go along with these problems. So first, let me tell you this, anytime you get the red triangle light on a Prius, you can get the red triangle light, you can get, uh, you can get um, the check engine light, all kinds of things can happen. And so you have two separate cooling systems on a Toyota Prius. You have a cooling system for the engine side that on older Priuses was run by a mechanical, um, a mechanical water pump that was belt driven. And then on the newer ones, it's driven by an electric water pump for the engine side. But then you have the hybrid side, completely separate system. So the hybrid side, it has its own water pump. And in the one I'm talking about, this is an 09, and they use this model for a long time. So this is what it looks like right here. So this is the water pump for the inverter. So all it does is it pumps coolant. Two wires, pumps coolant, very common failure. There is actually TSBs for this that you're supposed to verify if you get these, if you get codes that relate with uh, inverter cooling system performance codes or, or the, you can get a code for this. Um, you can get all kinds of stuff. A lot of different symptoms, a lot of different codes can be caused by this guy right here and also air. So you want to make sure that they, in the TSB, they tell you the first thing to do is to confirm if the TSB has been completed by replacing this with an updated water pump. Now, I'll show you what it looks like, uh, but the old one, it has a bracket. If it's from Toyota, it will have a bracket. And the, the non-Toyota one does not have a bracket. So usually I unbolt this and uh, it's got the grommets here. You gotta take the grommets out. Uh, actually the, the Toyota one, I just unbolt the pump from the, from, the, uh, from the bracket and I just unbolt this in the car. I leave the bracket sitting there because the bracket is much more difficult to get out. You don't need to get the bracket out. So on this one, I'm, this, this is an aftermarket one. It's a OEM replacement. I'm gonna to have to take the old one out. I'm gonna to have to put the rubber grommets in here uh, and then just snake this one in and put it in. Um, now, what can, what can be the cause, what can be telltale signs of this? Well, the red triangle light, the check engine light. On this one, this one had, so you're gonna see a P1116 coolant temp sensor circuit stack for coolant heat storage system. Another one, now this one's really common, is a P1121 coolant flow control valve position sensor circuit stack. And then this is the most common one right here. You'll get this code. It's a P0A93. This is an inverter cooling system performance code. That tells you that the cooling system of the hybrid is not working right. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to scan for these codes. Now when you do a Anytime you do a hybrid, you want to do a, a full vehicle code scan because you can have codes in the engine, in the high voltage computer, you have a high voltage battery computer, you have a high voltage ECU, you have a, and you have AC, heating and AC. So you have all these different areas that codes can store. You want to make sure that you check all the codes because you could have a code in one system and have codes in others. And when they're all put together, you have a different problem. Just, just because you have a POA93 code, performance code, doesn't mean that you have a bad water pump. Now what you want to do is you're going to get your scan tool and you're going to command this. And in this one here, this one was intermittently not working, causing a problem. So what you're going to do is you're going to command it. And it's in the front. I'm going to show you uh, right now. All right. 2009 Toyota Prius with inverter cooling system performance codes I'll talk about those codes but basically it's this one right down here this inverter water pump right down there it's this guy right here it's what this hose is attached to right there so basically the way you're gonna take this out is you're going to remove this inverter bracket. Okay, get the key out of the car and put it over to the side just to make sure the car doesn't start itself. You're gonna take this bracket off. It's gonna be a 12 here and two 12s here. 
Then there is an electrical connector on the driver's side of it that goes straight down. I'll show you what the new one looks like. You're gonna disconnect this hose clamp, this hose right here, and this one right here. So this hose clamp and this hose. And remember, I talk about this in my other videos, what you wanna do is use a paint marker and come across that hose clamp on both of them so you can make sure that hose clamp goes back in its exact position because if it doesn't, then it will leak. That hose, and, and every single time I've ever tried to put the hose back where it's supposed to go, it doesn't go where it's supposed to and it leaks. It's because you can't see it because of clearance. So you can snake this out of here. There's three tens down here that bolt it down straight down. There's one over there and there's one right there. And then there's one over here in the front that you can't see because of the hoses and the connector. So I'll show you what the new one looks like and I'll show you where all the mounting points are. But I've seen some where they tell you to take the headlight out and the bumper and all that. You don't need to do all that. It comes out. You just got to fish it out. It sits in the car about like this right here. All right. So I'll give you the headlight for reference. So there's the electrical connector. There's the straight up and down hose fitting. And then here's the one that, that curves over towards the radiator side. You're going to disconnect those, unbolt the three tens and then fish it out. You have to like turn it upside down and fish it out, but that's how you get it out. Now, if you have a Toyota one, it'll have a bracket on there attached to it. And it doesn't matter how pretty your paint marks are. Basically what you're doing, I don't know if you can see this one. Yeah, this one's all like diagonal, is that they all line up because they'll line up when you put them back on. So that's the key to your paint marker. Okay, so that's where it is. So basically what you're going to do, you can, you can just bring your scan tool up with you and you can put your hand on it and you can, uh, and you can just command it and you'll feel it run. Well, that's how you know if it's, if it's, if it's getting a signal and it's working, it's, it's operating. You don't know if it's working. It could be failing internally. So you want to make sure that you follow all your diagnostic uh, trouble trees and flow charts, identifics, whatever it is that you do to test it. When you get all done with it, what you want to do is you definitely need to use an airlift. So if you look up a diesel or a hybrid, it will tell you that the only approved cooling system filler way to fill it is with a vacuum refiller. And that's because it removes all of the air. So on a Prius, uh, on a hybrid, if you get any air in, in, the, in the inverter side, then you're going to have an overheating inverter. And that works the same way as if you have air in the cooling system. You can get, you can get uh, let's say you put a thermostat in the car and, or do a cooling system work and you don't use an air lift and you don't bleed it. When you get done, you don't have heat. It's gonna overheat because it gets air bubbles behind the thermostat and it doesn't operate properly. So you have to make sure that you purge the air out. Now the way that you purge the air out of these is I like to personally go in and I like to command, the, I think the original the original way to do it was to get a scan tool and after you get done, go command it. And when you don't hear the water pump gurgling and making noise, then you've bled the air out of it. Uh, so you just leave your cap off of your inverter bottle that sits on top of your uh, inverter and, and you just operate the pump. Now, you, I believe in, in a Prius, you can only do it a couple times and you have to turn the key off and then you have to cycle it back on. Uh, it'll do that so it won't burn up the pump. So make sure that you bleed it when you get done um, if there's ever a question, follow the bleed procedure. I'm going to show you. That's what the bleeding uh, nipple looks like. And that's what you're going to look at. If, I mean, that's what you're going to loosen if you're trying to get the air out. So sometimes you can open that bleeder and then operate the water pump. And then you'll see air bubbles. And that's how you can tell if you've got air in there. Uh, so these are the things that you want to check. Obviously, the first thing is you want to make sure that you have uh, your coolant full. That's always the first thing. Um, so you're going to check that uh, and, and they'll set a code. I mean, these things will code. They are very, very 
in tune with what's going on because there's so many computers and so many sensors for everything. Now the reason that you want to use an airlift is because like for an example, a six liter diesel, if you don't use an airlift and you get air inside the EGR cooler, that can cause a cooling system problem and cause the EGR cooler failure uh, because you have air inside of the cooler. So it's very important that you get the air out. I mean, it's always important you get the air out of a, out of a vehicle when you get done, um, just because it's not supposed to have air. Now, one of the things that I like to do, and even if I use an airlift, I still do this. I start the vehicle and I put it on full heat and I make sure that the heater blows hot at idle. Now, let's say it blows hot at idle, let's say that it's blowing warm at idle and you rev it up and it blows hot and then you go back to idle and then it gets warm Okay, you've got you've got some air in there. It's it should not change from revving it up. It should be able to blow hot, even if you're sitting at idle. And when I mean hot to warm, I mean a considerable difference. So I will sit there and make sure I have heat. Okay, heater blows hot. Awesome. Turn on the AC. Then I go test drive it. So I do that before I leave the shop to make sure that my cooling systems are bled and they're bled properly. I hope this helped you on this on in your journeys on your hybrids and uh, you're testing them, whether it be your own vehicle. Uh, I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all of my future content. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for the daily life as a mechanic. See you next time.